Greetings to everyone. Welcome back once again to this educational channel on biology. In this video, we are going to take a look at the list of compulsory experiments in KSSM biology curriculum. Right. So this list is shown in the first section of the new KSSM biology curriculum. It shows us the basic experiments that we must know, understand and remember for our biology exam. Okay. Uh, it does not include all the experiments discussed in the Form 4 and Form 5 textbook, but most of them, right? So it's the bare minimum that we should know for our biology exam and also for Paper 3 practical tests. Now, to clarify my statement, for practical tests, some of the experiments in the list which are shorter and can be conducted within 30 minutes are more important uh, because they may be tested compared to others which may take more than a day to do, uh, like studying the growth uh, curve of a plant okay that one will take a few weeks right and so uh, it's not likely to be tested in the short practical test right so let's have a look at the list to see uh, the list of experiments to see if we have covered and revised the important experiments that may be asked in a practical test okay in the practical test we also learn we also see also the list of experiments that we need to know also for paper one and two, uh, objective section and uh, structured and essay questions. Uh, they, uh, the experiments can also be tested in these two papers, uh, paper one and two. Okay, but our focus here is also to look at the experiments, important experiments for paper three, uh, the practical test. Now, just a clarification before we start. This video is just to provide some guidelines about some important experiments. It does not mean that other experiments which are not discussed here or which are not emphasized here are not important or not relevant for paper 3. So each student is responsible for his own preparation, right? For the biology practical paper. Okay? It's uh, for you, you are responsible to prepare as well as you can for the paper. Huh? And also for your preparation for paper 1 and 2, uh, biology paper 1 and 2. Okay, so in the KSSM biology curriculum, it stated that all the investigations, all the investigations, experiments and activities listed in each team in table 10, which I'm going to show in the next slide, are compulsory. Uh, so compulsory to know, understand, remember. Uh, and if the teacher, your teacher has carried out the experiments in the laboratory, you should take part in it, in these experiments. Uh, actively take part in them so that you're well prepared for your paper 3 exam. Investigations, experiments and activities are conducted using the inquiry approach. Right, so let's have a look at the list of experiments uh, that are given in the KSSM biology curriculum. Right, the first theme is uh, basic biology or fundamentals of biology and it covers chapter 1 to chapter 7. Uh, the experiments here are from chapter 1 to chapter 7 in the form 4 textbook, right? So the first experiment is from uh, chapter 1. Okay, when you see the number 1 here is the chapter. Now this number 1.4.1 1. is actually the learning standard. Uh, it's not the, the number uh, okay, for the experiment, all right? It's the learning standard. So here I've given you the page number in the physical textbook uh, where you can find this, these experiments, all right? So it's easier for you to refer to them uh, if you need to. Now, the first experiment from chapter 1 is design an experiment to solve a problem using scientific investigation methods. And uh, on page 15, uh, you can see an experiment uh, where we uh, study the effects of an activity on a pupil's pulse rate. This is the objective of the experiment. Huh? And then uh, the hypothesis is that a pupil's pulse rate will increase after rigorous exercise. Okay, uh, This is the first experiment. Then in chapter 2, we have to know uh, how to prepare slides of animal and plant cells. For example, animal cells are the chick cells huh, from humans and then plant cells are the, the onion epidermal cells. All right. So this involves some microscope work huh, because you have to look through the microscope to see the structures in the cells. Then in chapter 3, we have these experiments which are very important also for practical 
uh, your practical test. Conduct experiments to investigate the movement of substances across a selectively permeable membrane by using visking tubing and simple osmometer. Okay, so uh, these experiments are put in blue, uh, meaning to say that they can be carried out in the lab and they can also be tested in paper tree. Okay, now for experiments that are not in the blue printer, right, it doesn't mean that they cannot come out. Okay, some they can modify an experiment uh, which takes a long time and make it short also, uh, or change experiment or modify it so that uh, it still relates to the experiments in this list. Okay, so but I'm just showing you some of the important experiments, uh, right, like these ones in blue. Uh, take note that at the very least, you should know these experiments. Okay, the more exper experiments you know, the better actually. All right, so don't limit yourself only to certain experiments and spot the question. Uh, you can, uh, if it doesn't come out and then something else comes out, then you will find that you are lost, right? Now, you can't do the experiment. So make sure that you read all the experiments and try to remember the procedures, okay? In case you are given a non-guided experiment where you have to write down the procedure yourself. Huh? Right, so for chapter 3, conduct experiments to investigate the movement of substances across a selectively permeable membrane using visking tubing and simple osmometer. You can look that up on page 50 and page 51, okay? Uh, where we will find that uh, there's a movement of water from region of higher water potential or concentration, okay, into through by osmosis and through a semi-permeable membrane, like visking tubing, uh, into a region of lower water potential, right? So water always diffuse from region of high water potential to region of low water potential through a semi-permeable membrane, right? So these experiments investigate the movement of substances across this uh, semi-permeable membrane, right? And then uh, the next experiment is design experiment to investigate effects of different concentrations of, so of solutions uh, on animal and plant cells. This is, involves some microscope work. Uh. And then uh, one important experiment is conduct an experiment to determine the concentration of cell sap of a plant tissue where we soak the potato strips in sucrose solutions of different concentrations. And from there, uh, we determine the percentage increase in mass and then we plot the graph to find the isotonic solution. Okay, so I've already, um, I've already uploaded a video on this experiment uh, concerning the related to the potato strips. Huh? So please check back this experiment if you uh, need to revise it. Then for chapter 5, we have one experiment here, design and conduct experiments to study effects of temperature and pH on activities of amylase and pepsin. Okay, so these are enzyme experiments where we study the effects of factors like temperature, uh, pH and enzyme concentration on the activities of the enzymes like amylase and pepsin. Okay, uh, so for this is quite important for paper three also because it can be carried out in the laboratory in 40 minutes. All right, they can modify the experiment so that it can be carried out in a short period of time. Right, so you need to revise these experiments well. Huh? And also know the reaction, uh, what is the hydrolysis reaction involving amylase. Right, so amylase will hydrolyze starch to form maltose. Right, and uh, pepsin hydrolyzes uh, proteins to form polypeptides. Then it will cause the albumin to, in the test tube to become uh, clear, from cloudy to clear. Okay, if there's a reaction. Right, so let's go on to the next uh, slide. Huh? So all these in blue, huh? make sure you know, you memorize the procedure, know the, the variables, manipulated variable, responding variable, and the constant or fixed variable. Huh? And then uh, know how to uh, answer questions on observation, inference, uh, hypothesis, and so forth. Okay? including an uh, operational definition. So two more experiments under the theme of basic biology uh, are conduct experiment to investigate aerobic respiration. Now this, this um, experiment is a bit more complicated. All right. So I'm not sure whether it can be done uh, in the lab in a short period of time. 
and also unless they modify this experiment. Uh. 7.3.4, conduct an experiment to investigate fermentation in yeast. This can be done in the lab. Okay, so we have to know the process of fermentation in yeast. Uh. Okay, alcohol fermentation in yeast. Remember the acronym uh, GC, uh. glucose breaks down to form carbon dioxide, ethanol and energy. Okay, uh, that is the reaction that is investigated. Okay, now in chapter 9 on nutrition, okay, this is another theme already. The theme is physiology of humans and animals. So it includes chapter 9 until chapter 13 here. Huh? Now in chapter 9 nutrition, we have a lot of experiments that you need to know. Huh? So conduct experiments to investigate digestion of starch, proteins and lipids in food samples. Page 147 to 150, right? So make sure you know all these experiments, okay, how... Uh, you must uh, know the hydrolysis of starch by amylase, right? Uh, the hydrolysis of protein by pepsin. And then for lipids, there's a new experiment here involving phenolphthalein, right? Uh, which I hope to discuss with you and upload a video on this huh? tomorrow maybe. So the next one, conduct an experiment to investigate the energy values in food samples, right? So I'm going to upload this video very soon on the... Uh, determining the energy values in different food samples like ground nut, fish, etc. And then uh, we look at some of the questions that can be asked okay, in paper 3 concerning this experiment. All right. So this is the next video that I'm going to upload very soon. And the experiment is on page 156 of your Form 4 textbook. Now, 9.6.2, conduct an experiment to determine the contents of vitamin C in fruit juices and vegetables, page 158. Uh, so I already uploaded a video on this experiment, right? So if you have not looked at it, you can uh, refer to that video to find out what types of questions can be come up, can come out, and also the techniques of answering uh, these types of questions, like how to write the observation, how to state the inference, and and uh, what is the operational definition for vitamin C, right? How to draw the graph and so forth. Okay, all these are important for the practical test. Now, chapter 13, uh, conduct an experiment to investigate the effects of different volumes uh, of water, uh, okay, or different uh, volumes of water intake uh, on urine formation. Okay, on page 257 in your textbook, right? However, this experiment is quite long and I don't think that they will ask you all to go and uh, urinate uh, and then collect the urine and then do this experiment uh, during the practical test. All right. Now, this next uh, list of experiments, uh, this list of experiments here are the ones in the Form 5 textbook and they are more related to plants. Okay. Uh, so, some of them are quite long and I don't think they can be asked in the practical paper tree. But if they modify experiment in a way, uh, in an innovative way, they can still ask certain questions. Okay. However, this one, if you have time, then you go through it. Huh? So I'm not sure about whether this can come out in the paper tree. But let's just go through the list very quickly. So uh, now this is 16. Huh? So chapter 16 is actually chapter 1 of the form 5 syllabus okay conduct experiment to identify zone of cell division zone of cell elongation zone of cell differentiation in seed radical right and then another experiment conduct an experiment to study the growth curve of a plant this is going to take too long to do huh? it doesn't take just one day huh? so it probably won't be asked conduct experiment to compare tomato distribution on upper and lower epidermis of monocotyledon and eudicotyledon leaves okay and then conduct experiments to study effects of environmental factors on rate of transpiration using a potometer. So this is uh, quite a complicated setup. Takes time also to do, right? Unless they have modified the experiment. Uh, then the next one from chapter 2 from 5 syllabus. Huh? Conduct experiments to study effects of environmental factors like light intensity and temperature on the rate of photosynthesis. This one, they usually use the hydrilla aquatic plant uh, like hydrilla or elodia to do it all right 
So again, this takes some time to do. Uh, it's not a simple, a quick experiment. So uh, unless the, exp the, the experiment is modified. Huh? Then uh, the next chapter is actually chapter 4 already. Huh? Conduct experiments to study effectiveness of phytoremediation plants in controlling water pollution and soil pollution. This takes time to do, right? So not likely for paper 3 practical tests. Okay, another one is conduct an experiment to compare effects of presence of phytohormone on fruit, fruit ripening. All this takes time huh, to do. Right, the next theme is ecosystem and environmental sustainability. So here we have this experiment. Conduct an experiment to compare levels of biochemical oxygen demand or BOD okay, in different water samples. So this experiment actually takes some time to do, but it can be modified, all right, uh, using certain solutions uh, to, uh, so that the reaction occurs more quickly. And then the last one is from the topic on variation. Uh, conduct an experiment to study continuous and discontinuous variation in humans. Okay, so of course they cannot ask us to ask you to. Uh, conduct a survey uh, on the students in the class, right, during the practical test. But they can give you in the form of an analogy of as pictures, uh, give you the samples or pictures showing continuous or discontinuous variation for you to analyze, right? But anyway, um, so this experiment can be modified, okay? Same as other activities in the textbook, which are not mentioned here. For example, for uh, inheritance, there's one experiment using beads to illustrate monohybrid fertilization by analogy uh, found in the from five textbook page 236 all right so some of these experiments can be modified to and uh, they can use the analogy method uh, okay to conduct the experiment in the lab all right using uh, items to represent certain organisms for example uh, non-living things to represent the organisms so uh, in conclusion it's up to you how much you want to study for your paper three, but the first thing is make, make sure that you study those experiments that are short and able to be tested in the lab, huh? like experiments on digestion, enzymes, right? Osmosis, okay? Uh, nutrition, experiments on nutrition, okay? Uh, respiration too, right? Then for the rest, do go ahead and study them if you have the time to do it, all right? And uh, basically, it's still up to you uh, to decide how much you want to study and uh, put into this uh, to, to prepare for your paper tree. All right. So here, the video is just meant to give you a guideline on the most important experiments that you must make sure you know. The rest is up to you. You can uh, decide on your own how far you want to study uh, the other experiments Okay, to prepare for a paper tree. So all the best for your paper tree exam. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for one more, for maybe one or two more videos uh, on these uh, experiments like energies, energy value, which was requested by some students. Right? Goodbye for now.